So now that we have our application successfully deployed to Galaxy, uh, we know this because it's showing up in our apps list. Uh, and remember in the console we should see a message that says uh, visit your domain um, to check the status of your application. Once it shows up here we can confirm that our code has been deployed and pushed to Galaxy. Uh, and if all went well we should see uh, this green circle with running uh, when we hover over it. So this is good. But we're not quite done. Uh, in order to finish everything up we need to configure the DNS for our application. And the DNS is what determines uh, when a user visits our domain name, where does that domain name go? In our case, we want our domain name to point back to Galaxy, so Galaxy can say, okay, I want to host this application uh, back to whoever is requesting that domain. So, uh, what we need to do is jump into the settings for our application. So we're going to click on the application that we deployed. And you can see it's running here, and you'll get some, some stats uh, from Galaxy. This is one of the nice features. Uh, of the service so you can see how many people are currently connected to the app. There's just one since it's just us demoing this out. Uh, you can see how much of the CPU you're using, how much memory, uh, as well as the number of containers that you're using in your application. Uh, and we'll, we'll cover this in a little bit. We'll talk briefly about scaling your application uh, which is very easy with Galaxy and you'll see a little teaser here. You literally just use arrows. But again we'll, we'll go into that. Uh, so for right now what we want to do is jump into the settings tab for our application and come down here to domains and encryption. Now this is a twofer. We're going to cover both domains and encryption but first we want to make sure that we've added domains to our application. And What we mean by that is when we load this up originally or initially uh, we've already done this but you should see an empty list and what you want to do is click add new domain and we're going to add two domains for our application. Technically the same thing, but technically not. Uh, we're going to add the root domain of our application, so without www. And we're going to add it with it as well. So same domain, but make sure you have one that's without www. And one that's with. That's all. So the reason for this is that some requests to our application may be coming into uh, the bare domain. Some may be coming into www. and we want to make sure that both requests resolve uh, and specifically for our application we want all requests to be pointed eventually to the root domain or the bare domain uh, and so we have to do something special to get that to work but first make sure we've added our domains you know, with and without www. so once we have that now we need to find a DNS provider and for our example, we're relying on a service called DNS Simple. Uh, DNS providers could be the, the host of your domain, so wherever you register your, uh, your domain for your application, you can do your DNS there, uh, or you can use a third-party service like DNS Simple. Uh, in terms of what we're going to teach now, uh, we recommend DNS Simple. And the reason is this record right here. So we're going to add two records, one of which is alias. And an alias record is what allows us to actually host our application at the root of our domain. Technically speaking, by default, we can't do this. Uh, so we need to add support for an alias record and point it to wherever our application is hosted. Uh, DNS Simple, you know, of all the ones that we've personally tried at the Media Chef, this is the one that actually had this feature. The others, you couldn't really do it. Um, so that's our recommendation here. Um, but you can use any DNS provider. It's just up to you uh, what you uh, what, what sort of features that you want in terms of how your URL is going to be redirected. If you're just going to use www. You may not need DNS Simple. You can skip that uh, and just use whatever your current hosting provider is. So that said, for our application, in order for this to work, we need to add two records. The first is alias. So in DNS Simple, we'll click Add and then Alias. And we're going to leave the name box empty because, again, we want this to resolve for the root domain. So we can see if we type in here, it prepends it with a subdomain. We don't want to do that. We're just going to have the bare domain, in this case, ilovemeteor.com. And then we're going to add the alias as galaxy, you can see it popping up here, dash ingress.meteor.com. And this is the address that Meteor, or Galaxy itself, is watching for inbound requests to Galaxy. So when a request from a user 
at ilovemeteor.com is forwarded by this record that we're adding now to galaxyingress.meteor.com. At this domain, Meteor is watching for where inbound requests are from, meaning it can see, oh, this is coming from ilovemeteor.com. And so by adding our domains here, what we're doing is telling Galaxy, or we're making the connection for Galaxy to say, okay, when a request comes into ilovemeteor.com, look in the settings for all the applications we're hosting. Do we have one that matches this domain? If we do, great, serve up the application related to that. And that's why we're doing both the bare domain and www. is because we want both of those to resolve back to our application. And so we do that by pointing our alias first for our root domain at galaxy-ingress.meteor.com. Uh, one more thing before we do this, you'll notice this TTL value. Uh, this stands for time to live, and this is the amount of time that a browser that visits this domain is going to cache the DNS information for it. Uh, so when we're testing, we want to lower this quite a bit, uh, and that's because otherwise you'll drive yourself nuts refreshing the browser and wondering what you did wrong. Uh, it's likely because your browser cached it, and you don't want to have to fight with your operating system's cache or anything like that. So make sure this is lower before you start testing your domain. Um, so in this case, we're going to recommend one minute just so that uh, it's only cached for up to one minute and you don't have to stress about uh, the, the DNS you're setting not working, which is really confusing. So you may set something, but because it's cached, the changes don't appear and you start getting angry and throwing things. Don't want to do that. So make sure your TTL is as low as possible uh, while you're testing this. And later, if you want, once you're sure it's working, you can go ahead and bump that back up. So we're going to hit cancel because we've already done this. Uh, we're going to come back to this list, and now we're going to add a CNAME record as well. So notice this is going to the exact same galaxyingress.meteor.com. So we're going to add CNAME. But this time we're going to type www. into here and make sure that we pop the galaxy ingress into this box as well. So we're going to do both of these this time. Before we did this empty. This time we want to make sure we do this. And the reason that we're using a C name on this as opposed to an alias record is because subdomains can use C name records. C name records are just uh, basically masks that point back to whatever we tell it to point to. So in this case, going to www.ilovemeteor.com is going to point our request. It's going to stay in the browser as this, but the underlying request is going to be forwarded back to here. So it's a very subtle difference, and the reason we use a C name versus an alias is because aliases are specific to root domains, meaning without a subdomain like www. Whereas root domains need a did I say that correctly? Root domains um, need a special alias record. Subdomains do not; they just use C name records. Plain, making sense? Good. Okay. So www. in this box. Again, galaxy-ingress.meteor.com, so Meteor knows to watch for this domain. And again, this here maps to the domain that we've added here, so Meteor is actively watching for this. Uh, and now, make sure we set our TTL and then go ahead and pop add record. Uh, one more time, I'm going to cancel this because we've already done it. And so after a little bit, and be patient with this because DNS takes however long it takes to propagate. We've set our time to live to one minute, but that may not reach you. It all depends on the, the way that the DNS settings are propagated through the internet. Uh, and so if you're in Siberia for some reason, um, it may take longer to reach you. You just got to be patient. Um, but most of the time, I, at least speaking from you know central United States, it's pretty quick. Uh, it is about a minute, maybe two minutes at most. Um, but once that time window has passed, go ahead and access your domain. So you can see we've deployed our application already, and we're trying to hit ilovemeteor.com because behind the scenes our DNS is pointing back to Galaxy. Galaxy is saying, oh, I have ilovemeteor.com as an application, and it's serving that application back to us in the browser. So this is confirming that our DNS here, the alias and the C name, are working. If we watch closely, the way that we've done this, if we're, we're setting this up essentially so that www. is redirecting back to our root domain. So if we look here, 
if I type in www. you'll notice that it just points back to the root. Um, so if you want that, make sure that you configure your records like we just walked through. If you do not, make sure to follow the galaxy-guide.meteor.com explanation uh, for hosting on a subdomain. So notice it's very similar to what we just did, uh, same exact steps, but you're going to use different values and a different approach, but same exact thing. So don't worry, it's not drastically different, just slightly different, uh, but make sure you pay attention to these values. And again, this time we're on the DNS page of the Galaxy Guide at galaxy-guide.meteor.com slash DNS dot html good okay so at this point our dns is configured we can see our application is loading up at the domain we expect uh, but the last thing we have is ssl so we're going to pause real quick and we're going to explain that separately all right so at this point we've got our domain name set up our dns is working and we confirm that because we can see our application over here in the browser uh, but the one thing that we're missing is SSL or an HTTPS connection to our application. So if we go in the browser here, we do HTTPS version of this, you'll notice we can't provide a secure connection. And that's because we have not set up any SSL certificates for our application. Now, uh, don't freak out because if you've ever done uh, an SSL configuration before, you'll know that it is a serious pain in the butt. Uh, it takes a lot of time and headaches and copying and pasting of secret keys and all this stuff that's not fun to do uh, and very error prone. It's easy to make a lot of mistakes with. Um, that was the past. The good news is by using something like Galaxy we completely get rid of that problem uh, and this, this was probably the most incredible thing I saw uh, when we started hosting the MeteorChef.com on Galaxy which is it's literally a button now. <laughs> so the new domain authority that came out uh, a little bit ago, probably a year now, maybe, maybe two, uh, Let's Encrypt, uh, which is trying to start a movement to generate free certificates, uh, they also set up an API. And luckily for us, the folks at uh, Galaxy, or at Meteor, building Galaxy, uh, took the time to say, okay, well, <clears throat> we wanna add a feature to the application where you literally just click a button, your certificate is not only generated but applied to your application and you're done. Uh, and they did that. So uh, in terms of adding SSL to your application, we only need to do a few things. Uh, the first is we wanna click this generate certificate button and we're gonna do this for both uh, the root domain that we set up as well as www. Um, and as a side note, if you do have an existing certificate, maybe you've, you've had this application on another domain, you've already done all that work, you can still upload that certificate here, um, but for the sake of simplicity, uh, we're just going to go ahead and generate a new certificate. So we click on this, and this does take a bit depending on um, uh, magic and elves and crazy stuff behind the scenes, uh, but trust that it will work. So uh, you can see once we click that button, we get generating certificate, and now we just need to be a little patient. So if something does go wrong, we'll get an error message here explaining what we need to do. Um, but in this case, it's just waiting. Uh, all of our configuration should be correct. Uh, and so what we're going to do is jump down here and we're going to run this on this one as well. And so we're going to pause real quick and let these finish up and then we'll keep moving. All right, so the elves and dwarves and magical folks behind the scenes have done their work and we can see that now under encryption, uh, both of our domains, the bear domain and www. both have encryption enabled. So one last step with this, we need to make sure that we force connections to HTTPS. Now why do we want to do this? So technically speaking, if we don't check this, um, somebody could access our application at HTTP colon slash slash. Now in the case of our ilovemeteor.com application, we're not doing anything terribly secure. We're not processing payments or anything like that, but it's still good to have SSL because it'll uh, encrypt the connection back to the server and ensure that things like usernames and passwords don't just go flying over the wire um, there. Uh, they are, they're hashed and all those things, so not to scare you there, but it, it's, it's good practice to say, unless you have a very specific reason not to use HTTPS with your application, uh, you should force every single connection over it and don't allow HTTP connections. So what we're going to do 
is check force HTTPS on both of these. So any connection that comes in is going to be forced over HTTPS. And as an added measure, we're also, back in our application source, going to add a package to our application called force SSL. And this is a core package set up by the Meteor team. And what this is ensuring is that both uh, what we just did in the browser, so this is kind of like a, a double down of this, it's forcing the connection over SSL and it's also ensuring that WebSockets, which is the protocol that uh, Meteor is using behind the scenes to communicate um, our, our DDP data is also using WebSockets secure. So that's kind of like the HTTPS version of WebSockets. This package will ensure that that happens. So what you want to do is make sure you add that package to your application and then redeploy your application to Galaxy. And in fact, we'll do that now behind the scenes uh, while we're explaining everything else. So uh, you can see, and there you go, there's the advantage to using our NPM scripts. Uh, we just do that and we're done and it starts running. So that's going. And now back in the browser, um, we've turned this on. And if we come back to our application, uh, you can see here we've already loaded it up. Um, but if we hit HTTPS, I love meteor.com now, uh, or your own domain, you should see the green lock in the browser. And if we click it, uh, we'll come down to here, click details. And we can see that this page open up. This is a security tab in your inspector in Chrome. Uh, it'll tell us that the page is secure with valid HTTPS and we can even view the entire certificate. And what's neat about this is if we look at it, we can see that this is coming from the Let's Encrypt Authority. So we've done nothing, we clicked a button, and a few minutes later we've got um, our certificate from Let's Encrypt applied to our server and configured for our domain. Pretty cool. So that's working. And the last thing we want to confirm is that we're forcing connections. So if we try and hit this site at HTTP, Great. We can see that our connection is redirected to HTTPS. So that just ensures that any connection is always over a secure uh, connection back to the browser. We don't have to stress about that. It's done. Um, so yeah, that's pretty beautiful. Uh, all we had to do was click a button to say generate the certificate, wait a few minutes, uh, toggle a few more boxes, and now our application is secure uh, behind SSL. And this is also auto-renewing. So you don't have to chase down your certificate uh, later on. So uh, SSL certificates typically expire on an interval of a few months or a year to two years. And when they do, we have to regenerate those certificates and go through the entire SSL process again. Fortunately, through Let's Encrypt and Galaxy, we don't have to worry about that. That's automatically taken care of for us. So deep breaths, because that is fantastic. Uh, SSL is terrible. Fun side anecdote, a uh, product that I ran a few years ago, I completely forgot to renew the certificates. It was my first product, give me a break. Uh, but I forgot to renew the certificates, and sure enough, a bunch of customers started emailing me freaking out because I forgot to do that. So take this as a blessing in disguise that, hey, this is automated for us. We don't have to worry about it now, uh, and that's fantastic. So that is setting up SSL and DNS, and your application is now deployed to Galaxy. Uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is scaling back in the written tutorial.